Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Today we come here, it's really warm in here. And I mean not uh, physically, but uh, spiritually, because the love of God is given to each one of us here. Today is the last Sunday of liturgical year. We celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. We are reminded that Jesus is the King, the Lord of our lives, and we belong to His kingdom. But honestly, when I hear the word King, it seems to me that nothing is good there. Because most of the kings on earth rule by force and fear. I was born and grew up in Vietnam. The country used to have a monarchy system. So I know that kings, most of them, not good. Anyone who says the name of the king, a king, intentionally or unintentionally would be killed. Not only him or her, but the family up until three generations. So no one can say the name of the king at that time. Many words were changed. Many words were pronounced differently. And kings usually don't care for their subjects. Their lives are usually unethical with many concubines. Many Vietnamese kings used to live in a huge palaces with gold, eating expensive food while their people were dying with hunger. A Chinese king used to build a city, a city to keep thousands of concubines for his sexual pleasure. In the Bible, King Herod the Great killed thousands of male children. King Herod Antipas killed John the Baptist because he criticized the king for marrying his brother's ex-wife. So generally speaking, earthly kings are not good because they have power, but they don't use power to serve people, but to do something else. How about our King, Jesus Christ? The Gospel today tells us his crown is a crown of thorns. He has no palace, no scepter, and no throne. He is the king who rules from the cross. And it seems that there are not many subjects there. All of his friends have left him. Those who nail him to the cross mock him and laugh at his face. If you are a king, then save yourself. The sign said he was a king, but no one believed it. It was a joke. It was an insult. If you look at the crucifix in our church today, the big crucifix there, you will see an inscription above Jesus' head, which means Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. But may I ask you a question? When you look at the crucifix, do you see anything that shows that Jesus is a king? To me, from earthly standards, I find nothing there. And I'm glad, I'm happy, because you and I could not find from Jesus anything that shows that he is the king. Because Jesus Christ is the king, but not by the viewpoints of human beings. It's true that through the prophet Isaiah, God said, 
My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. Jesus is the king, but not like other kings who rule by force and fear. Jesus is a different kind of power, the power of love. He did everything so that he could save people, giving happiness, joy, and peace to people, not for himself. People mock him, insult him, but he prayed for them. He asked the Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. She should come to serve, not to be served. He didn't force people to wash his feet, but he himself knelt down and washed his disciples' feet. And you may agree with me that if someone loves us like that, Choosing to follow him never makes us disappointed. He freely gave up his life so that others may live. His power of love kept loving until the very end. A man crucified and dying on the cross shows us that God is love and that we are to love one another. That is why Jesus is the king and that is how we belong to his kingdom. It's a wonderful that Jesus did not go down from the cross to save himself and some people at that time. But he stayed. He chose to stay on the cross so that he could save all people in the world. The cross is not a place of Christ's weakness, but of his strength, not a lonely place but a place of grace where billions have gathered together and continue to come to Jesus. The cross is where our soul and spirit can be healed, where we can go back to the Father, where our pains and sorrows are comforted, where we can draw strength and light. The cross is a place where every human being can come to meet Jesus there. It's amazing that I have seen many people as they approach death find Jesus to be the only person to whom they can turn. Whatever they did in life, politician, farmer, business person, construction manager, athlete, writer, nun, deacon, priest, physician, military general, teacher or parent. They can turn only to Christ as the end of life comes and speak those same words of the dying thief. Jesus, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And today, St. Paul reminds us that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, that all things were created through him and for him. He is the head of the church. Jesus is our king because he has conquered all suffering, selfishness, and sin, yet even death itself. He has turned failure and defeat into success and victory. He rules our hearts not by force and fear, but his gentle power of love. He gives us vision of what his kingdom is all about. So my brothers and sisters, it's wonderful when we proclaim that Jesus is king the King who loves us and saves us and gives us his life to nourish us, sustain us, and lead us into his kingdom. Like the dying thief, may we also pray to Jesus, not only the moment we, we are going to die, but every day, Lord, 
allow me to live in your kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. May the grace of God help us continue to follow Jesus, the King of the universe, the King of our family, and the King of our own heart.